Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to show you the same example that we did in the previous video, but with a slightly different method. Notice that this method only works for the portions of the truss where you have right triangle triangles, or I should say right angle triangles. If we need to calculate the forces in the members here, notice we have a right triangle here, and we can associate these three forces the force of compression, the force of tension, and the force support here in F sub C, we can associate the magnitude of these forces relative to the length of the beams of this triangle. In other words, if we take this triangle right here, and we draw it out, notice that the lengths here are 5 meters, here the length is 10 meters, and here the length is 8.66 meters. The length of those beams are proportional to the force acting on this joint. F sub C is equal to 1830 newtons. The force here from B to C is unknown, and the force here from C to D, CD, is also unknown. But what we can say is that relative to 1830 newtons here, associated with a 5 meter beam, we can find the force on BC and CD simply by associating with the length of those beams. In other words, we can write that 1830 newtons divided by 5 meters is equal to the magnitude of the force on BC divided by 10 meters, which is equal to the magnitude of the force on CD divided by 8.66 meters, which means that BC is equal to 1830 newtons divided by 5 meters times 10 meters, which is twice that, 3660 newtons, which by the way is the same force that we found on the previous video, and CD can be found by taking 1830 newtons divided by 5 meters and multiplying this times 8.6 me meters and let's see with a calculator, 1830 divided by 5 times 8.66 equals 3,170 newtons. And that also was the same value that we got in the previous video. If you know the length of the members, that makes it really easy to calculate the magnitude of the forces if you know one of the three in the triangle. Now here we don't have a right triangle, we can't use it there, but let's try to apply it over here to this joint. If we draw the triangle over here, notice we have F sub A, which is represented by the length of this member right here, F sub A, which is equal to 3170 newtons, and the length of that member is 5 meters. We have AB, we're trying to find out the magnitude of AB. We know the length of that member is 7.07 .07 meters. And we're trying to find this, the strength, or I should say the tension, on AD. And the length of that member is 5 meters. In the exact same fashion, we can find the force on those beams. We can write that 3,170 newtons divided by 5 meters is equal to AB divided by 7.07 .07 uh, meters, which is equal to AD divided by 5 meters. Right away you can see that AD must be equal to 3170 30, newtons because they're both divided by 5 meters. AD, therefore, 3,170 newtons. And AB can be found by taking 3,170 newtons divided by 5 meters and multiply it times 707. And let's see what we get there. 3,170 divided by 5 times 7.07 .07, and we get 4,482 newtons. Notice how nice it is if you know the length of the members and you recognize the shape of a right angle triangle, you can go ahead and now represent the sum of the forces at the joint right here at the connection 
as a, being equivalent or in ratio to the length of the beam. So the, the magnitude of forces can be made equivalent to the length of the beam associated with that particular corner and that particular corner right there. Pretty nice. That will make it a lot easier and faster once you know the length of the members to calculate the forces on the members of a truss. And that's how it's done.